Today we'll look at how you can create this combined text and image effect. You can start with a person like this and make them look like this. So I'm here in Affinity Photo and the first step is to create a new document. I'll do File, New, and you can make it whatever size you like. I'll make mine 4600 pixels by 2600 pixels. I'll click Create. Now I'll bring in the image of the person. I'll do File, Place, and I have this photo here. It's a PNG that I'll bring in. I'll drag the right size. I recommend a transparent image if possible. If your image isn't transparent, you can use a background remover or use the selection tool to mask them out. I'll make a background layer just so we have some contrast for now. New layer, new fill layer. I'll make it some type of blue and I'll drag it to the bottom and I'll just lock it. Now I wanna add some text. I'll choose the artistic text tool here. If you don't see that tool, click and hold on it and select artistic text. It might be set to frame text. So I'll select artistic. And I'll click and drag to type my word. I have a font I like called Anton. I'll choose that, Anton here. I'll drag it so it's roughly the size of the person. And I'll put it behind them. And I'll also make it white. But of course you can make it whatever color you like. Now I'm going to make a selection in the shape of the text. So I'll select the text layer here. And then I'll say select selection from layer. Now I have this selection here. And actually, I want the inverse of this selection. So I'll do select invert pixel selection. Now I'll click on my person layer and I'm going to click mask layer. And now I can turn off the selection with control D. So we're masking out the person in the shape of the letters. Now we want to paint part of the person back in. So I'll select the paintbrush. Make sure you're on the mask layer here. Select the color white and then paint your person back in. And you can decide how you want to paint them back in. It's up to you. I'll paint back in his upper body over here. I'll leave his legs mostly behind the letter, but I'll have his arm come out in front. I think that'll give a more 3D effect here. So it's good to have some things in front and some things in the back. And then over here, I'll paint this part back in. So we have a cool back and forth effect going here. Some things are in front, some things are behind, and it creates a sense of depth. Now you might make a mistake and bring too much in. So maybe you paint this in here and you don't want this to actually be there. Now you could select black and paint it back in. But you notice you have to actually really select that edge perfectly. Otherwise, you can get this gap there. So let me undo that. You can always select your letters again by selecting the word and say layer, selection from layer. And if I want to get rid of this part here, I'll just select black. Make sure you're on your mask again and paint it out and fix it. So that's the way you can fix any overpainting that you did. Now we can also add a shadow effect behind him. I'll add a pixel layer here. I'll call it shadow just so we know what it is. And I'm going to drag it into the text here. So I'll drag it into the word strong. I'll let go. And now whatever I draw on this will be limited to the letters. So I'll select the paintbrush. I'll select some type of gray. Let's choose a soft brush. So now I paint on this pixel layer. It's limited to the words. So let me undo this. And what you can do is add a little bit of a shadow behind your person. Just kind of trace their outline a little bit. I'll put some shadow there. Just gives it a little more sense of depth. Now my text is white, so the multiply effect won't do anything. But if your text is a different color, you can set the blend mode of your shadow to multiply and that'll help blend with the colors a little bit more. Speaking of colors, you can always adjust the vibrance and saturation of your main person here. So with the person selected, I'll click adjustments. Let's go to vibrance, increase it a little bit, increase the saturation. Maybe also do a slight curves adjustment. Let's give it a little bit of an S curve, see if that helps. Close this. And we can always change our fill layer if we want. We can change the color. I like the color, but I want to give it a little bit of a radial gradient here. So I'll select the gradient tool. I'll choose radial. I'll draw a circle here. I'll just give it a subtle gradient effect. And here we have our final result. If there's any topics you'd like to see covered, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.